With Houdini 20, Karma XPU is now finally out of beta and we also got some new and handy features in Solaris in general. So let's take a look at all of them. In an empty scene, I want to immediately switch to the Solaris desktop and I want to start working here. First of all, we need some test geo, so let's use the new shader ball that we have in here in Solaris. And with our camera tool selected, let's hit H to zoom in a bit. Let's also create a ground. For this, let's use a subcreate node like this. And in here, I simply want to drop down a grid to make this a ground. We also should have some light in our scene. So for this, let's use the new Karma Physical Sky node. Let's drop this down. And once we wire it in and we expand our scene graph tree, we get a Karma Physical Sky object in here, which consists of a sky and a standard USD distant light or sun. Let's switch to a new Karma XPU viewport to see how this looks like when rendered. And on a Karma Physical Sky, we can, for example, play with the exposure, make this a bit brighter. Let's maybe turn this up to one. We have the angular size to make our shadows softer or harsher. And we can control the position of the sun either by those two angles, so the solar altitude and the solar direction like this, or we can set this to a location, date and time. But I'm sticking with the azimuth and altitude. Of course, we got a lot of options for the sky as well. I'm going to leave these as is and move on. What I want to do next is bring up the snapshot strip here on my viewport. And for now, I just simply want to take a snapshot here. Let's maybe make this down below a bit smaller and let's hit snap right here. Let's leave this for now and move on. Let's take a look at materials next. Let's drop down a material library first. Let's wire this in and jump inside. And in here, I want to drop down a Karma Material Builder, which in previous releases was the Karma Material X subnet. And if I dive inside, we can see that we also got a Material X standard surface as default here in the inputs now, which is really nice. Let's first of all apply this to our shader ball. Let's autofill materials and assign to geometry. And in our scene graph tree, let's expand our shader ball, the geometry subcategory, and let's use the preview surface and simply drag this in to assign our material to. And let's take a look at a new setting that we got here on our material X standard surface, because this now supports thin walled materials. To test this, let's first of all go into the transmissions tab and let's turn this up to one. And let's also maybe go into the specular tab and turn down the specular roughness to a smaller value. And as we can see here, we got a standard glass material. But now if we go down to the geometry tab right here at the end and turn on thin walled and render again, and let's maybe turn off lights and our geometry visualizers like this, we can see that this now looks much more like for example, a bubble surface or very thin translucent or transparent plastic. And again, is your standard thin walled material that we got here now. We should also take a snapshot of this. So let's hit snap again. And let's finally take a look at a new way of applying materials, not using the material library, but instead the material linker. Once we write this in, those two menus here on the left and right are already populated with all the materials that we got in a scene and all the objects that we got in a scene. So here's a shader ball again and a shader ball with the preview surface right here. But what we also have is a catalog in here. This comes with a standard catalog that ships with Houdini. However, what's a lot more exciting is we can also use the much larger Open AMD Material X library. If you want to bring this up, we have to set up a location where we want to save all of this. I'm going to choose here my standard asset folder. I already have a folder here from my AMD material library. Let's hit accept. And now all of these materials are loaded in from AMD's website. And we, for example, can choose something like this, some granite, and simply drag this into our material list. And all the right textures and so on will be already automatically downloaded. And in the end, we can finally take our material and simply put it on the object that we want to render, like this. Also, if we take a look at the rules tab right here, we can see again what we did here. We took our Argentinian layered onyx material and dragged it on the preview surface on a shader ball. So this is where our assigned materials live. 
However, there's a lot more you can do here with different expressions to automatically apply materials to a number of objects. However, this is something that we won't cover in this video. Let's finally take a snapshot here as well. And let's explore a new feature that we got with those snapshots because now inside the snapshot editor we can right click on every snapshot and say revert network to the snapshot and now our network is again edited to this point where we took this snapshot and for example we can do this with this snapshot as well to get a plastic sheet and with this snapshot as well to get back our onyx material. Finally, for Karma, we can right click on the display options and bring up the color correction menu in here. And in here, I'm very happy to see that now with Houdini 20, we not only got support for OCRO 2.0, but we also got ACES installed by default. And you can also go under render under OCRO settings to see in which render working space you're currently working and how different file formats are interpreted. So basically everything you want to know about an ACES workflow. The only thing that you should keep in mind for now is that this menu right here was a bit crashy for me in previous testing. So maybe save before changing anything in here. But this is all I have to say about Karma. Again, this is the first batch of Houdini 20 videos that you will get from us. There will soon be some more about clouds and apex and so on. But until next time, it's cheers and goodbye. And if you like us and want to support us or just want to learn more about Houdini and, and of course this, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thank you so much. Without you, Antagma in this form would not be possible. With a special thank you going out to Mohamed Alhabri, Mumumia Ichigo, Joseph Horton and David Aiden. Thanks so much guys.